Oh, wow. I guess I'm live. Hello, I'm John Priolette of johnpriolette.com. And I recently did a reading for a woman, and it really inspired me to make a video about this. Um, and I want to also do some EFT tapping with you. And, you know, it, it really, really pains me when I, when I have women who come to me, and so many of them are coming to me with relationship questions. And, you know, they're in their 40s. They really want to have children. And they're really kind of getting afraid that they're just never going to meet that guy you know, the one to have their kids with. And so they're almost like ready to just settle, to just have a child with anyone, even though they know that the guy's not going to be around. It's not going to work. And that really makes me sad. And it's also what keeps me doing my work. Okay. Because, um, you know, I'm going to be quite frank with you. If you have a relationship pattern going on, you're going to need more than just a reading, okay? Um, I, I can give you a reading and I can tell you things about, um, you know, well, for example, she had a question about one man in particular. And this card came up with regard to him and, you know, his personality. And she wanted to know if there was any chance of having, you know, a relationship with this guy. And I said, well, yeah, because this is an offering of love. However, I really had the feeling um, that this is somebody who tends to be a little immature and may not be really capable of stepping up as a man and really pursuing her. And so in answer to her question, yes, there is possibility because it, it appears to me that because this card came up, this is an offering of love. However, what, what we all need to understand, okay, and this is part of, um, you know, Jack Canfield, um, the author of, uh, he started the Chicken Soup for the Soul series, that Jack Canfield, in his book called Success Secrets, his number one success secret is take 100% responsibility for everything that happens in your life. And so I'm going to tell you that includes your love life. What is going to happen here? Okay. This card is showing um, a, a potential. It's showing a particular energy that is present, that was present at the time of her reading. However, I said, you know, so much is going to depend on how you behave. Because consider this, if you're a woman watching this and you have a particular pattern that's been going on for months or maybe even years, I want you to consider that there may be something that you are doing, a way of behavior that maybe the men in your life are actually reacting to, and you may not even realize it. Um, see, what I do is I really help women to get their energy right, because you have to have a great deal of confidence. It takes a great deal of confidence and courage to be able to, to navigate these relationships. And the reason why women, you know, this is one of the biggest mistakes that women make, and they do it all the time. And I know I've been guilty of it too. I've done it, okay? I think we all have. We like one guy, and we get hooked on one guy. Hook, line, and sinker. We're hooked. That's it. Instead of notice, guess what? There are, I don't know, uh, what was it? Well, the last count was like over 7 billion people on the planet. Why do we get hooked on one guy? Why? When, when he hasn't even shown us anything. 
you know, and, and what I'm advising you to do as a woman, because look, you know, when you're in your thirties, forties, and you want a child, you want, you really want the whole thing. You want to have a man who's going to be around to raise that child, to help you with that child, to help that little child of yours know that they're not going to be fatherless. Okay. I'm sorry. I get passionate about this. <laughs> sorry, but I do. And so the thing that we have to stop doing as women is we have to stop getting hooked on a man before he's even made a commitment. Until he's made a commitment to you, there's nothing to get hooked about. And so, um, you know, and the, and the number, you know, so we meet a guy and we right away, we start getting anxious. You know, does he like me? You know, that's the number one question I get in readings. Does he like me? And rather than asking, does he like me? I would rather have you say, well, what do you really feel about him? What has he shown you? Okay. How is he showing up in the relationship? Does he call you? Does he pursue you? Or is he kind of laying back expecting you to come after him? Now, that's okay if you want to be a man, if you, if you want to be the masculine role in the relationship, that's fine. But most women that I know that have been playing the masculine role are not happy with it because they don't feel cherished. They don't feel adored. They feel exhausted because they're having to do all of the work. And if you start out in a relationship chasing a man, Guess what you're going to have to do during the entire relationship? You're going to have to chase him. You're going to have to be the one to arrange the dates. You're probably going to have to pay for all of the dates as well. So I hope you earn a lot of money. Okay. I can help you with that too, by the way. But I would rather you not. As a woman, I would rather have you play the feminine role, which is what you came here to do because you're. I mean, if, if you're gay, lesbian, whatever, I, I understand, you know, you may feel more masculine, even though you're in a feminine body. I get it. But what I'm saying are for heterosexual couples, um, you know, most women unwittingly are playing the role of the man. And it's exhausting. And why you do that, it usually just leads to a great deal of anger and resentment and so what I want to do is do a quick EFT tapping to kind of loosen up some of the attachment that we get to one person now she was only attached to this one person and I said you know why don't why aren't you dating at least three men you know I mean, so that's number one. Don't date just one man. Date at least three. At least three. Okay? And rule number two, date, make sure you go out with them at least three times. Why three times? You know, why, Dawn, if the guy's boring, whatever, why do you want me to go out with him on a second and a third date? And here's why. Because if you have a pattern in your relationships where you're always attracted to men who are unavailable, do not commit to you, men that you have to chase or you feel that you have to chase, when actually if you were dating three men, you'd have more choices. You wouldn't have to chase anybody because... If that's what he wants you to do, if he never calls you and he never pursues you, guess what? You say, next. Obviously, this guy's not right because he's not stepping up. He's not being a man, okay? And I, I know I'm getting kind of, you know, really a little in your face about this, but I'm passionate about this because you know what? If you're in your 40s and you want a child and you want to get married, you don't have time. You really don't have time to play around with these guys who aren't ready to step up and be a man. 
You don't have time to chase them around. So date at least three of them. Date the guy at least three times. Why? Because what most women do, you're caught in a pattern. You're only, you only have chemistry with the very guy that is going to ignore you, that is going to not call you, the guy who is totally unavailable in some way, shape, or form. Those are usually the ones that you're going to be attracted to. Those are the ones you're going to have chemistry with. And you'll have immediate chemistry. The chemistry will be white hot. This is the guy that's going to have instant chemistry. And it's going to be so exciting and so tempting. But the one that you need to stay with is someone who has a very secure kind of attachment style. And it means, I'm very sorry to tell you this, but I got to be honest, it means you will probably find him boring at first. He's probably not going to excite you. There will not be instant chemistry, but it is going to be more of a slow burning kind of fire. It is something that will develop over time. But that is something that's going to be more long lasting. And so I'm talking to you, if you have this pattern of always, always being attracted to unavailable men, if you're going to break the pattern, I'm telling you, there's a lot of inner work that needs to be done with uh, working with your inner child, first of all. And that's really kind of what I specialize in, is, is doing that inner work. So that you heal the childhood wounding that causes you to constantly be attracted to men who aren't good for you. And, and you know, who really aren't going to be there for you. And then you just, the wounding just continues over and over and over. You keep recreating the childhood wounding. Because each man you pick is going to be exactly like the parent, the, the parent who didn't pay any attention to you, the parent who neglected you, the parent that you tried so, so hard to get love from and you never could. And so now you are subconsciously seeking out that same parent. And, and you know, one of the ways to get around that, as I said, you have got to break the pattern by not going with the one that you have instant chemistry with. Go with the one who's actually going to be a nice guy. The, I know you've probably had them before and you pushed them away or maybe you dated them a little bit and then you started a fight, pushed them away because it felt weird. Okay. So those are the two main things. Oh, and of course, number three, this should be obvious by now, but I, I'm, I'm shocked at how many women, you know, still is not obvious. Don't have sex. Don't, do not have intercourse with a man that you have no commitment with. Now, obviously, I'm talking about women who want to be married. I'm talking about women who want to have a long-term committed relationship. If that's not what you're looking for, then obviously, you know, you can pretty much do whatever you want and get yourself hooked on whoever you want. Because the thing is, especially if you're a younger woman or if you're a woman who has um, had a background of sexual abuse, um, especially at a very young age, what happens is it actually causes damage to the brain. And women like that tend to um, become sex addicts and they can be hooked on a man just through sex very very easily and you know who you are okay you know if this is your pattern you already know it by now so um i'm just telling you something that you know maybe you already know it and maybe you've been saying what the hell is wrong with me but i'm telling you it's not your fault um, but it just so happens that women usually under the age of 45, 50, under the age of menopause, we actually become hooked after we have sex with a man. And so for us, you know, 
I mean, sex is supposed to be so liberating, right? We're, we're supposed to be liberated as women by have, being able to have sex with whoever we want to. But the fact of the matter is, if you're a woman under 45, 50 years old, I'm sure you're finding that having sex with a man is not that liberating. Because when you get hooked on him, and your body is craving him, and you're on the floor in the fetal position crying your eyes out, that, there's nothing liberating about that. So please, please, please. And you know, especially when you, when you have a propensity for this, and you know who you are, you know, you have got to raise your standards. And a lot of women think if they raise their standards and they make a man hold out for sex, that he's going to leave. And I say to you, if he does leave, good riddance, let him go. Because I guarantee you, the man that you sleep with on the first or second date is not the one that is going to stay with you. He's not the one who's going to marry you. Okay? That's, that's very, very rare. And, and probably wouldn't be the kind of guy you'd want to be with anyway. So having said that, I'm sorry, I get a little bit passionate about these things, but I get so tired of seeing women hurt themselves. And I get so tired of seeing women in their late 40s and they're desperate, they want children. And they're, they're caught in these patterns and they just, they don't know how to get out of it. And I'm gonna leave information underneath this video um, how you can get a personal reading with me, but also I do have a program. I, I actually work with with women, coaching them one on one, and I coach you to actually be able to heal these these patterns, these very hurtful patterns in relationships. Um, because as I said, you don't have time for this. You, you've got to get yourself out of these patterns in order to really find the man that you want. So, you know, I mean, you can go to as many tarot readers as you want, and many women will go from tarot reader to tarot reader to tarot reader. But I am telling you, as the tarot reader, as the intuitive, yes, you can come to me for a reading, and I would love to give you a reading. But quite frankly, I'm gonna be honest with you. I can do much, much more for you because if you're caught up in this kind of pattern, you're going to need more than a reading. You really need to get some, some private coaching from somebody who actually understands this pattern, what causes it, and how to get out of it. And I am that person. So please feel free to contact me at, uh, at my website. Uh, and I will give you also uh, a link below, okay? And before I leave you, I want to do some tapping with you, okay? And I want to do some tapping on, excuse me, i got to get some water, and I hope you have some water handy because it's good to drink water while you're doing any kind of energy work and especially EFT tapping. So... What I want to do this tapping on is your attachment to a particular man. And part of the reason is when you, you know, because women always say, why is it I always have these guys attracted to me that I'm not even interested in? And that the one that I am interested in is not interested in me. And I'll tell you right now why that is. Because when you like somebody, you have an attachment to him. You really, really care about what he thinks about you. And because you care so much, you, um, you have a tendency to be very kind of tight and stiff around him because you're watching every word you say. In fact, some women will even, you know, try to censor what they say to make sure that the guy is going to be in agreement with them, or they just try to say whatever they think he's going to want to hear. Whereas when you're with a guy that you really don't 
care about, you're not really attracted to, you're going to be yourself. You are, because you don't care what he thinks or how he's going to react or whether he likes you or not. And that's another good reason to go out with guys that you're not even attracted to at first, because it's very good practice in just being yourself, you know? And so let's just do some tapping. Just think of somebody, um, maybe there's a guy in your life that you are really attracted to and you're really hoping it's going to work out. And yet the more attached you are to him, the more, the more it actually repels him guys can tell when you're very attracted to them and they're either going to you know use that and take advantage of it or they're just going to be totally repelled and and what most of them will do well they'll try to take advantage of the fact that you're attracted to them by trying to get sex from you but you're not the kind of woman they're going to want to be with because they don't find that attractive so I know, it sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> anyway, let's do some tapping. We're going to actually tap on being needy. Even though I really, really want this guy to like me. I do. And I really hate to admit it. Because I feel so needy. So insecure. But I really, really want him to like me. So much so that sometimes I think I'm actually censoring my words to make sure that he is going to agree with me. I'm so careful not to say anything that he might disagree with or not like. And I really find it hard to just be myself around him. Because I really want him to like me. It really, really matters to me. And I love and accept myself even though I want this guy to like me. I'm so attached to having him like me. And I'll go to 25 different tarot readers just to try to get one of them to say that there's a chance here. I am so desperate to get this guy to like me. And I really am not interested in dating anybody else. I want him. I've got to make him like me. Please like me. Please like me. I'll do anything to get you to like me. And I do. I do anything and everything. And I get my heart broken. Even though I want him to like me. I build castles in the, in the sky. I, I end up trying out his last name. I have all these fantasies about being married to him. And the truth is, I barely even really know the guy. We've only seen each other maybe a few times. And I've already seen myself being married to him. I know he's my soulmate. And I... I even went to a reader and she told me he was my soulmate. She told me he's my destiny. So I've got to make this work because if, if, if this doesn't work, oh my God, what if there's no other soulmate for me? What if he's the only one? I love and accept myself, even though I have got to get this guy to like me. I have got to make him like me. I feel so needy. And so ashamed of how needy I am. So now let's tap for the points. I feel so needy. <sighs> now on the eyebrows. Oh my God, this is embarrassing. I feel like an idiot. But the truth is, I put all of my time fantasizing on this guy. I spend so much time fantasizing about him. Maybe I know that I should be dating more than one guy because I actually don't have a relationship with this guy. We have no commitment. 
He hasn't really given me anything. He hasn't shown me anything. I'm not even sure if he's dating other women. I'm assuming that he's not. I wonder if that's such a good idea to make that assumption. Wow, I haven't really thought this out too well. I put all of my hope on this one man. And I have a pattern of doing this. And I also have a pattern of getting my heart broken. Because I put all of my hopes on one man. Only to find out he's got a girlfriend or he went back with his ex. Or he didn't even like me. I think I'm going to raise my standards. Maybe it is a good idea for me to go out with many men. There's so many nice men out there. Wouldn't it be better if I just went out for coffee and met a few different men? What's the worst that can happen? Because even if some of them don't end up being anything romantic, I might actually make a good friend. And you can't have too many friends. At any rate, I'm going to practice being with men. And while I'm with them, I'm going to try to think of at least three things, even if I don't find myself attracted to the man that I'm with. I'm going to look for at least three things about him that are good. Three positive things about him, about his personality, anything. I'm going to make this a practice. Because I want to turn myself into the kind of woman that the man that I want would want. I want to make myself a good person to be with. Someone who's fun to be with. Someone who knows how to find the positive qualities in a man. Instead of always criticizing and finding fault. Instead of always waiting for the other shoe to drop. Instead of showing up on a date with all of my baggage from my childhood. All the negative stuff that I learned about men. Oh, take a deep breath. So just now when you think about that person that, that you're so that you're feeling so attached to, just tune into that now and just see if it's lightened up a little bit. And um, I know, I know it has lightened me up. I mean, the whole idea is kind of funny now because that's, you know, kind of what we do. We show up and bring all of our baggage and, and we're kind of waiting for him to do the thing that the other guy did. Or, you know, you're waiting for him to be a cheater because your stepdad was or whatever it was, you know. And this is all so unfair, really. Um, please let me help you. I can give you a reading. I can tell you if there's a there's a potential if there's a potential love match. Yes, I can tell you if the potential's there. But there is so much that is dependent on the energy, the inner energy that you are bringing into the relationship. So much of it depends on you. After all, if you look back at all of your relationships. The one common factor is you. So take 100% of the responsibility for everything in your life, including your relationships. And that's not to say that, you know, he didn't do something, you know, that maybe 
could have been done differently. But the thing is, there's only one person that you have control over, and that is you. You have control over your energy, your behavior. It's not about trying to control anybody else's. But I'm telling you something. When you change from within and you start becoming more confident, more charismatic, and more courageous from the inside, other people around you can't help but notice it. And they will be attracted to you. And they will react to you in a positive way. So, again, my information's below. DawnPrelette.com is my website. In fact, go over to my website at DawnPrelette.com, and the link is below, and sign up to receive my free video series. And it's called The Three Unconscious Vows That Are Keeping You From Having the Love You Want. And that would be a good way to get you started. And um, and don't forget, I also have um, private one-on-one -on -one coaching. You can um, get a hold of me at my website for that. And um, we can even set up a, a half-hour phone call if you need to talk to me more about that and find out more about it. So in the meantime, uh, thank you for watching. Again, my name is Dawn Priolette.